Good morning, everyone. I have been sick for like a week, so I've been waiting to make this video for five days, and I'm so excited. Uh, this is a how-to guide on how to create a new mental pathway. This is like the guide to creating new habits in your internal landscape. So it's, which is different. Like, I think a lot of people know how to make physical changes. Like I want to wake up at a different time and there's, there's a, a predictability and kind of like an under, like a basic understanding that you know what to do if you're creating a different habit in that sense. Like I'm going to set my alarm at a different time every day, or I'm going to work out five days a week, or I'm changing my, my eating habits. Like I think those things are somewhat understandable, but when you have mental habits, like every time you encounter a certain person, you have anxiety or you have negative associations with a certain activity or place that you go or something that you do and you don't like feeling that way every time or, or even a topic of conversation and every time it comes up you're like eh, I don't like this I'm not comfortable and in our world this is this is basically the how to eliminate triggers is one thing and how to create new pathways that you want to have that are positive either in replacement of something negative or something that just simply wasn't there but it's kind of a how to navigate your own inside of your head and understand that you aren't your brain. So this is kind of number one. The preface to all of this is understanding that you are not your brain. Your brain is just a tool you have. It's, it's just like your body. It's just something that you have to use. And I think that, in fact, I know that's not common knowledge amongst people. So this is a new concept that's kind of the foundation for everything I'm going to say is understanding that your brain is just a tool. Like ever, like your body, like you know, any tool perhaps you have even to, um, like exercise or diet or relationships or wh whatever other things you have that you use as tools in your life, your brain is simply another tool. And when you're detached from it in that way, you can tinker. The main thing we're going to do here is teach you how to take your brain, like imagine it's almost like a a train and you want it to go like it you know you whenever it hits this fork it always and you, I'm sure you've seen a train track like they have kind of a it hits a Y but there's a set point where it's going to go this way or that way depending on how it's how the, ra the the rail is set so you're you know normally you go this way and you're wanting to take the thing take your train take your train of thought take your yourself and go down a different pathway so that takes understanding that you are not your brain, which also will mean somewhat detaching from who you think you are and creating a new concept of yourself. Um, so step number one, you are not your brain. First thing to know. Um, well, that's kind of the preliminary, not step number one. This is step number one. When you have something, so you wanna choose your new habit. What is it that you want to create? What is it that you want? What is the positive thing you want? Because whatever else you're leaving behind, it's going to be like a, like a wire that's been disconnected. And it's just, it'll, it'll kind of like, it's interesting. It's like a wire, but it's also like a weed. Like it'll just kind of crumble and just disintegrate over time. So you're going to forget whatever it is you used to do. What's the new thing that you want in your mind, in your life? What's the new habit that you want? So this could be something really big. And for people who are doing DNRS, you might have a lot of these you're working on at once for people who are not doing DNRS, you have the luxury of getting to kind of pick and choose one little thing at a time. So say there's one particular person you want to train yourself to feel calm and confident in conversation with that person and to create a positive um, or at least a neutral association with that person. Or maybe there's, you want to learn to trust yourself more. So every, so you know, in your decision making, you want to be able to make decisions faster and trust your initial response to something. Maybe you want to learn to love yourself more. And so that would be something where that could take a lot of form. So again, if you have the luxury, you could choose one aspect of self-love, like not like instead of criticizing yourself in your mind, like kind of replacing that that tape in your mind of criticism with something that is positive. Um, there's so many variations of what this could include. It could include, I mean, for anyone who's de dealing with body image, it could be a matter of every time a thought about your body arises, you know, replacing it with something positive. But it's a new mental habit where we have these mental habits. And the first step, of course, is, well, actually, this is step two. So really, step one is just 
think of a new habit you would like to have or almost even a new like personality trait even like if you want to be a really confident person if you want to be a really decisive person if you want to be a funny person like there's so many ways to cultivate these new habits and it's just a matter of kind of creating a new road in your brain and then going down it lots of times and that's it it's that simple so but this is really helpful to again if anyone wants to kind of change an association it could be that it could be either creating something entirely new or changing a current pathway that is definitely negative um, so if you have things like um, like anxiety especially if it's if it's specific anxiety related to certain things this can help a lot with that um, or any other kind of mental mental issues you know like again the repetitive looping thoughts depression um, body image issues lack of confidence and you know indecisiveness that sort of thing this can really help a lot with that so number two is cultivate awareness so this means two things First, it means you need to cultivate awareness of what is actually going on right now. What's happening in your brain right now in this situation that you, you know, whether it's something neutral that's not there, you might notice like, I'm not taking these actions. When should I be taking these actions? Because that's the awareness you need to have in order to make that change. When am I taking these actions? Or when I could, when could I be taking action that I'm not? The other, the other thing would be Alternately, if you're trying to change an existing pattern that is negative, you're cultivating awareness of what is actually happening in my mind already right now. What is going on? Where is, where is my brain going? What's happening in my brain all day? Like if you find yourself kind of in a, in a slump or in a rut after, you know, a particular situation or just in general and they kind of cycle through and you know, one big thing that is a good thing to notice is sometimes, you know, if your brain overall, all, all people, all humans have a negativity bias because it keeps us alive. We are supposed to notice things are negative or potentially dangerous because that, that is the very thing that keeps us alive. So we all have that negativity bias and it might be that your brain one day will, will, you know, go through a tape of body image or self image just in terms of who you are and your worth as a human being. It might be a self image thing one day, next day might be about your body. Maybe next day it's like a relationship or a situation in your life and your brain starts ruminating about that instead. And it just will find something new every day, ruminate about because it's used to being in this negative rut. So there's a lot of different ways the brain can keep itself somewhere familiar because it really likes what's familiar. So, so step number two with cultivating awareness is about maybe even before you start to try to install a new habit in your brain, just notice what's happening. Just take a day or a week. And if taking notes helps, take notes. Um, if just kind of noticing within yourself works for you, that's fine. That is totally fine. But just notice what's happening. What is, what tape is playing? What's being said? What are the messages being sent to your own brain? What messages are you sending yourself? Kind of what's that tape sound like? And get a feel for it. And notice too, if it's just generally a, like your brain has to have something negative to ruminate about, ruminate about every day, or is it really just, because it could be that, or it could just be that, you have certain associations with people or activities or locations that are negative and you want to change them. So kind of just notice what's going on in your own brain. Get familiar with your own internal landscape in that way by just kind of being aware of maybe taking, you know, so one thing you can do is set a timer for every hour and just kind of check in like what's happening inside of me right now? What's happening in the back of my mind as I'm doing something else? What's the chatter back there? And just kind of be aware for a moment, take a moment to just kind of be like, hmm, what am I thinking about in the back of my mind? What's going on back there? And just notice that, take note of it and then see, you know, what whether it needs to be changed or not. Is it something pleasant? Is it something uplifting? Are you, you know, thinking about how great your work is or how much you love your children and you're looking forward to going home to be with your family or you're looking forward to what's happening tonight or tomorrow or is it, you know, is it something negative? That's step number two, so cultivate awareness. Yes. So the other piece that was taking action. So that was step number one, actually, of, of step number two. The second piece is to take awareness. So the, the thing you're going to do once you've kind of taken note, then 
you know, on day two or week two, what you want to do is under like pick, you know, you find those points at which you realize either I can start taking action here or I want to change the pathway here. That moment of choice, that moment where you hit the why, start to notice when am I hitting that why? When am I having a chance to change? Because that's everything. All of your power lies in that moment when the train has arrived at the why and you have an opportunity to go a different direction. So you're gonna cultivate when are those moments and it's it takes a lot of energy input at the beginning to kind of create that new pathway, but you're going to end up saving obviously an enormous amount of energy when your brain isn't going off and worrying about things without your permission all the time. So it just be prepared to kind of put in this, this effort in the forefront to make this change because you're creating a new habit and that takes effort and it takes energy. And once it's running effortlessly, you'll have so much more space in your life. So it's almost like instead of your energy leaving you without your permission to go on worrying about something or perpetuating a negative pattern and kind of your energy, it's almost like throwing, you know, cash out the window. Like instead of that, you're going to take that cash and you're going to invest it. You're going to take that energy and that effort and invest it and in moving the track to something new. So really cultivate awareness of when do I have the chance to change? And this also is kind of a, a readiness. There's a readiness. I'm ready to act when an opportunity arises and to understand part of you're not your brain is understanding that your brain and your limbic system, which is involved very, very much in any mental or emotional habit, is very much like a three-year-old or a puppy. So when you create this new change, you want it to be fun and interesting because while you're kind of attaching, um, I like the wire analogy, like you're attaching a wire from one connection to another, except that you imagine that the wire is almost, it's like a, it's like a puppy, you know, and so it's like, which one's more interesting? Which one is more fun? So whichever one's more emotionally charged, it's going to connect to that. And emotional charges, like strong emotion, that's what creates that connection and really solidifies it. And strong, positive emotional is what you're going for here because you want a strong, positive, constructive pathway. So attach a really positive emotion. Uh, create something fun. Imagine when you notice these moments coming up in your life where you reach that fork that it's like, you're in Mario Kart, you're in your favorite video game and you're like either jumping over like an obstacle and like getting a little coin or something. Or um, one of the things I did when I was pruning away thoughts, <laughs> I watched a, a, a TED talk called The Magic, <laughs> The Magical Art of Not Giving a Fuck. And whenever the opportunity came up and my brain wanted to go care about things that I don't care about and spend my energy on them, I was like, nope, I'm keeping that fuck. And that was really funny to me. So I would laugh every time and it would kind of distract me and make it feel more lighthearted because it really is a lighthearted thing. Like that, you know, you're teaching your brain a new trick and it's this part of your brain that is so young and it can learn new tricks just like a three-year-old or a, a puppy. Like they can be very persnickety, but they're really just young and, and, and they can they can throw tantrums, but it, they're really just a little person who needs, you know, some laughter and some firmness and some consistency. And that's all it takes is kind of making it fun and doing it consistently. One of the things I meant to add to part number one too, when in this process, when you're making your choice of a new habit, be sold out, be all in. Don't give yourself a back plan B. Don't give yourself anything to fall back on because your success lies in being completely in, just totally in. Like this is the new thing I'm doing. Everything else, like the past is gone. The past is over. It's time to move on. It's time to create something new. I'm ready for something new. And when you really want it, that makes it possible. That makes it easy. But it's being really convicted. This new thing is what I deserve. This is who I choose to be. And that will give you, when you want it and you see what's coming and you see how amazing it is, it gives you the, the power to make this process easy and to make it doable. Like it gives you the energy to want to have cultivate that awareness, to want to make those changes. And that's what makes your brain is really always reading. Like it's trying to do what you want. So when you say you want to do something, but then you act like it's such a drag, your brain's like, well, clearly you don't want this. So we're going to keep going the old way. Like you want to do the old thing. But if you create a new pathway, and you're so psyched about it. And you're like, yeah, I did that. And you get really excited and really like, like you start laughing or, or you sing a new song or you do something and, and you reward yourself after you made the new choice, then you're acting in accord with your new choice. And this is the thing too, the brain 
and the limbic system understand action and emotion. That's the language the brain speaks. It does not understand, it understands images, actions, and emotions. It doesn't understand words or ideas. So you can say you want something all you want. You can repeat affirmations to yourself all you want, but the real change happens when you really are acting and feeling and creating images in your mind of how amazing it will be to have this new association or this new habit or this new pathway that you're creating. So that's step number two, cultivating awareness of, <laughs> cultivating awareness of when you have that, that choice. Three. Get attached, I hope the other ones are visible. Get attached to the feeling. So like I just said, there is a feeling associated with each of those pathways. So the old feeling might have been something like anxiety or depression or that sinking feeling in your gut of like, oh God, we're going here again. Or like, oh my God, I have to talk to this person again. Oh my God, I hate this. Um, or fear or whatever. That's kind of your old emotion and your brain's used to that. That's the old pathway that it was set on. So you, what you want to do is create this new image. You have this now, this new image in your mind of I'm this person. I love, and it could be anything. You could create a positive association with the activity or the person themselves. Or you could create... A positive association with yourself that you're able to handle challenging situations because that really depends individually on what your situation is so if you create a whatever that thing is though it's going to be something positive it's either going to be a positive emotion of i can't wait to go to this place i'm trying to think of what's a good um well a basic one would be like exercise you know maybe if you don't like exercising or in the past you haven't liked exercising this is just a really neutral example um, and you're trying to teach yourself how to enjoy exercise you can just list out every benefit possible, every feeling like, you know, you know that other people get an endorphin high. So tell yourself, tell your brain, hey, we get an endorphin high. We get like this super cool, like amazing high from this. It's amazing. It feels so good. You start telling yourself that, who knows? Your brain might start pumping out endorphins for the first time ever. I have a friend who's said this has happened for him. And I, it's just, that's the way the brain works. So it's totally within the realm of possibility. Or I... Hmm, trying to think like okay so one thing for me was creating a new association with my husband obviously like there was an old association there but I wanted to enjoy being around my husband so I kind of trained myself to see him in a different light to see him through the eyes of unconditional love to see him in all of his strengths and all of his positive aspects and to tell myself like ultimately yeah I'm training myself but I'm I want to have a relationship where I like being around my husband obviously that's that's a good thing that's something I want in my life so I train myself to create that positive association, to make it be there by focusing on how good that will feel when it's there. And then on all the aspects of interacting with him that are positive, of all of his positive attributes, and as well as valuing my ability to be a strong individual who's not impacted by another person's emotions. So, you know, if someone else, you know, maybe you have a family member who's like <laughs> in a chronically bad mood, but you want to be the kind of person where your energy bubble is so strong that other people's energy just bounces right off and doesn't affect you so that you can go on and live your life. And even if you're around like a person who struggles with anxiety or depression chronically, they don't affect you anymore. So it kind of depends on the situation. But regardless of their situation, you're going to have a new feeling that is positive. And that is probably that's the key thing is really associating your new self image with this new emotion. That's really important. Hold on, I have notes here. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything because this is this is one of the key things that I think is, um, for me, was like one of the, it takes a lot of practice repetition and it's really important to get that kind of wired in there as a natural thing, which is the goal ultimately is just be the person where this is the case for you without trying. Yes. Okay. So I kind of already went over some, but one thing is understanding that, um, we all have attachments. We all have almost addictions in a sense. Like we all are dependent on something. We're human beings. We are inherently dependent, whether that means we're dependent on, um, so some good example would be, you know, a lot of people are dependent on the validation they receive from others as a sense that that gives them their self-worth. So the change here would be getting used to and getting hooked on being validated by your own actions, getting hooked on feeling good about yourself because you decided to feel good about yourself, because you see your own inherent worth and you affirm what is good in you and you get hooked on that feeling 
instead of the feeling from other people where it's like, I don't need other people's validation. It's nice to get affirmation from others, but I'm just fine by myself because I know my worth and I know my strengths and I know myself and I love myself and that's enough for me. And so that other people affirming or validating that is just a bonus, it's not necessary. Uh, another one, mm, this is a big one. Attaching yourself to the feeling of pride and satisfaction at a job well done versus instant gratification. And this could play out in a lot of things. Perhaps at work, you have a habit of getting distracted and you want to eliminate that habit. You have the habit of checking your phone, going on Facebook, going, checking your email that's not your work email, whatever it is. I think this is really common nowadays. I don't need to go into it. Um, and I'm training myself out of this actually right now too. So creating more of an attachment to the sense of satisfaction and maturity and a job well done and the freedom you'll have from knowing like you got that done and now you can just, if you want to set a timer and go play on Facebook or Instagram or your email or your video game for 15 minutes, you can do that. You don't have work hanging over your head, but it's a matter of getting attached to that feeling of satisfaction and pride in your own work ethic and in getting your work done versus the instant gratification of doing what you feel like doing in that moment. It's a matter of shifting that attachment from one thing to another. So when you're attached to the right things, ultimately in life, your life will go well naturally. Like if you can imagine what it would be like to be, you know, attached to the physical feeling you get from eating well, from getting a good night's sleep, from um, exercising, from having your validation come from the inside instead of the outside, uh, from having a good work, work ethic and being able to pass that on to your kids or know that when you're in a relationship, like a romantic relationship, you are a stable person who is strong and reliable and a good person. Like you're you're solid for that other person. That gives you a real sense of, of value and, and kind of gratification that's definitely not instant gratification, but it's much more gratifying in the long run. So that's three. Get attached to that new feeling. Get really firmly attached to that. And then that's what's going to make it just be so that without thinking in the future, your brain automatically goes down a new pathway. Okay, time is time is flying. Okay, we're going to go through these last few couple quick. This Thankfully, that was the meat of it. Step number four is find a friend. So find someone who's all in. Find someone who's doing the work. Find someone who's all in so that when you, someone else who's doing something like the same thing that you're doing, and who's really in it for themselves, they really want the same thing, you know, they want to really become a better person, become a different person, cultivate their potential, and they're in it for themselves. So you can kind of like vibe off each other, but you neither person has to drag the other person along because then obviously that's not really, that, that just drains your energy. So that's really important though. There's really nothing more satisfying than, and more inspiring in my mind than seeing someone else who's really doing the work. That is one of the most inspiring things in my journey has been seeing someone else who's all in and feeling that kinship of knowing there's somebody else out there who's doing this and they're all in. Or even, you know, at, at the times when I've been almost all in and kind of like teetering on the edge when I see someone else who's doing this, it's like, whoa, I want what they got. I want that direction. And so it can be really inspiring. Plus, you guys can understand what you're doing because it it's a very this is a very particular kind of work that really doesn't relate and most people aren't in this headspace so other people could think you're weird for taking the time and the effort to create these new associations other people might not understand what you're doing and that's okay especially when you've got at least one other person or maybe a couple of other people who do and who really get it and can celebrate and see how monumental it is what you're doing in your life that you're creating this whole new life for yourself by creating these new habits that is so encouraging and so heartening so i really highly recommend finding um a buddy to celebrate with because there's so much to celebrate as we do this, as we free ourselves from these habitual patterns and create a life of real freedom and power. There is just nothing like being able to celebrate with someone who gets it. It's an incredible feeling. So I highly recommend reaching out um, on Facebook, you know, Facebook groups, meetup groups, whatever you can find. Uh, obviously, well, DNRS, you've got other buddies and whatnot, but find someone you really click with, like really go the extra mile. Um, if you're a person who prays or believes in the law of attraction, pray attract someone, bring someone into your life because it really makes all the difference in the world. So that's four. Okay, step five. Catch your slip-ups quickly, kindly, and firmly. 
kindness and firmness go like are, are just so important together in this process because again your brain is like a puppy or a child and you need to be very non-negotiable very consistent but very kind in order for, and when you are your brain will cooperate so well over time like it becomes this well-oiled machine and all you have to do is you know eventually you'll get to a point where all you can you can just say one word or a phrase that you've kind of taught yourself and your brain will immediately switch pathways onto your new habit um, your brain really wants to serve you. It really wants to serve you. But in this process, it takes a lot of effort. It can feel like a lot of emotional and mental, like heavy lifting to get your brain off that because there's a lot of power going in that direction. There's a lot of momentum moving in that old direction. So it can take a lot of energy and awareness to stop that and change it to the new pathway. So sometimes you, none of us are perfect and you might lose awareness for a moment and all of a sudden the brain has you know steamrolled down that old pathway and you're like oh god here we go and so the a really important thing is to understand that that's part of the process it's okay all it takes is a little kindness a little bit of gentleness a little bit of um a lot of self-forgiveness and really a lot of compassion for yourself in this process because it's not easy to do this i mean i'm i'm a person who's recovered from ptsd chronic anxiety specific anxiety, depression, um, other mental disorders that involve a lot of looping thought patterns. So I understand from a, on a, in a personal way how difficult and how much effort it takes to get your brain off of one pattern and into the new one. It takes a lot of internal strength. So be as kind to yourself as you possibly can and be as consistent and firm because that consistency and that firmness is part of the kindness. The more you really hold yourself to the highest standard you can, the faster this process goes and the more you minimize the effort you have to put into it. So the best thing you can do is just notice it, have it, take a deep breath, have a moment of forgiveness for yourself and then do everything in your power to change the pattern to the new, you know, change your, your mind and your thought pattern and your emotional state to that new pattern that you want as quick as you can. The longer it goes in the wrong direction, the more difficult it becomes to turn it around. So, so speed, again, the three things are quick, quickly, kindly, and firmly. That's really, really important. Quickly, kindly, and firmly to create that new habit. And this video is very long, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna step down for the day. But um, one thing I do wanna add for anyone who's watching this, I have plenty of material of my own to make these videos, but I would love if anyone has ideas has things along this line of self-improvement and kind of changing yourself from the inside out. If you're a person who does DNRS and you've watched some of my videos and you're curious if I can help with something, please, please, please message me, friend me on Facebook, send me a message on Messenger, leave comment, whatever you can do to reach out. I would love ideas and love to be able to help people individually kind of, um, tweak your internal practice to make it easier because this is something I have very very extensive experience of and knowledge in so um, please 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 reach out if there's anything you think I can help with but that is all for today yeah let me know if this is helpful feedback again always welcome so much love to everyone watching this so much love so much love so much love Mwah!